to Anderton's TV, everybody. I have got a special guest today. I've got Avi, Avi Shabbat from Shabbat Guitars, uh, who has taken a little, a little detour uh, on his way home from the Guitar Summit in Mannheim. All these foreign words, I don't know, I'm hopefully getting them right, um, to, to talk about his guitar brand Shabbat, which we've started stocking. So welcome to Guildford. Um, and Thanks it's lovely to see you. So. Yeah. How long have you been making guitars for? About 12 years or so now. Okay. And where, where did that kind of passion for guitar building come from? It started when I had to fix something. <laughs> so many builders start yeah, like yeah. that, don't they? So what, yeah. people are bringing you guitars to try and fix, or your own guitar, is it? That you're yeah, trying my to fix? own guitar that I tried to fix, and it was like a serious repair, so. <laughs> Well, yeah, tell us about that then. So what are you, a gigging guitar player, just trying to service your own guitar or what? No, so I started as a sound engineer. Right. I went to, to sound engineer school and I, and I did front of house gigs and some recording gigs at like a cool place that had all of it together. And you know, as, as uh, years went by, guitars started to take more of a center stage kind of thing. And, uh, yeah, and then uh, it just evolved from there, I guess, I don't know. Was it a full-time thing for you, or did that only start when you moved to the States? Only started when I moved to the States. And even then, when I moved to the States, I still did some sound engineering and kind of slowly kind of tapered the two. So our first, <clears throat> um, I'm trying to think if I'd sort of, I think I'd seen the name a little bit over the last year or two, but I'd never really investigated. And then Pete came back from the NAM show in 2023. So this year's NAM show, mm -hmm. which was a pretty small NAM show um, yeah. compared to previous years. But the good thing about that, it meant it, there was more time to go and find some of the smaller builders like yourself. And Pete came back with a, a fairly short list of things that had really, really blown him away. And one of the things were, was your guitars. Uh, and he'd obviously got to meet you and, and you got on well. Yeah. And then fairly shortly after that, like maybe six weeks after that, eight weeks after that, um, I had an interview with Justin Derrico, Pink's guitar player, who has been one of my favorite, you know, sort of like pop rock guitar players ever. I've followed Justin's career on JTC and all that kind of stuff for ages. And he came in with basically one of these. Yeah. And I'm like, oh, this is like, two Shabbat things in the space of two months, you know, it's like there's a sign yeah. here. So, and he obviously knows you well and was absolutely raving about your guitars. And so we just, I went through it with the, with the guitar team and, and I said, we should try this brand, you know, and hearing lots of good things. So we, so we got some. Yay. And then these literally arrived 
two days ago or three、yes. days ago, which is great timing. And then and now you're here, so it's like the stars have aligned. <laughs> If, some, if you had to explain the sort of you know what you're trying to do with Shabbat guitars in a sort of a you know what's your what's your lane or your sort of where do you feel you you, you want to live in the sort of guitar making world?、Uh, you know, to me, it's about、um, keeping it keeping the guitars really steady and really like vintage inspired.、Mm-hmm. At the same time as being kind of modern and cool and and just a, a really like a music tool, you know, I'm not reinventing the wheel or anything like this. Just feeling like just do the right things, right and and. So your, what was the first moment then? So you're obviously building, sorry, repairing guitars. Yeah.、Uh, why, why did you move to the states? Just it was just、uh, you're hitting a, a wall.、Uh, In life,、mm-hmm. and、um, and you feel like you、uh, you need to s- shake things up a little bit, and that was that moment. What was the moment when you thought, okay, I think I'm going to try and you know start my own workshop? So it didn't start exactly like that. It started with me coming there and just like trying to、uh, blend in with guitar repair or or、uh, you know. Manufacturing in any way, so I started looking around and just going store to store, look for for any, for anything. I ended up doing like a little bit of repairs at a store that was in Hollywood.、Um, then I worked for Andy Brower for a while, and then I landed with Lance from LSL,、mm-hmm. and、uh, he started something, and I、um, I I I saw the whole evolution of. A guy starting in the garage with an idea, <clears throat> and we picked up pretty well. So you learned a lot during the、yeah. LSL period. Yeah, you? yeah, and it kind of also kind of paved the way to the styles that I'm making. Right. And yeah, at a certain point, I just realized that、uh, I guess I have to go on my own just because, again, there was a a, a ceiling there, and I was not、yeah. happy. Right. And just yeah, being in one station doing one one thing. So so what what year was the what, did you break away then and start your own? Yeah, I think it was actually around two thousand and ten, maybe a little earlier,、mm-hmm. something like that. Yeah, just it's all a blur. just you, <laughs> but just you on your own on on that. Just me on、one? my own. Yeah, I just got married and then we、uh, moved to our own house. And it, at that point, you're like, okay, you you own a house now、mm-hmm. in LA. You cannot live out that. You, So yeah, my wife kind of told me, "Listen, you can go on your own. It's all going to be fine." So I started a whole shop in my garage to start taking repairs, and、um, yeah, one day my friend Gonzalo Bergara、mm-hmm. came and and he's a great gypsy guitar player, gypsy jazz guitar player, and he said to me, "Avi, you see this this model with the snake head?、Uh, the Fender charges six thousand dollars with the package, yeah,、uh, with a little rectangular." Plate, I, I would love to have one of those, but I just don't want to pay six thousand dollars for it. Can you make it for me? And I said, yeah. And I told him, eighteen hundred bucks, I'll make you one. And I literally, I had like a joiner and a bandsaw and a and a hand router. Yeah. And, and I made him one, and he owns the first one. And this is how the brand kind of was born. I think that's、there. what. It's funny. I think that's what. Drew me visually to these first was going. You, I mean, 
if, for, for guys that, that don't know um, what Abby's talking about, the, this style of headstock was the original um, headstock design that Leo Fender used on the original sort of yeah. the, the, the original the version of the Telecaster. Um, so kind of before it, before it went to the six aside. And so very occasionally, I think it dates back to even like 1949 or something like that. Yeah. So um, very occasionally when Fender wants to celebrate that, they'll, they'll redo like a pine bodied Telecaster mm -hmm. with this style of headstock. Um, but it's very, very infrequently. And, I, and no one else even seems to do this. You know, you either get your traditional Gibson style three aside or, or you, you know, you get a six aside headstock so i think we were sort of drawn to this kind that does look cool um that you, you i think you were doing pine bodies on a lot of these weren't you yeah the, the, yeah the, this model is uh strictly pine that's right so there yeah. i know you've got options but that pine seems to be an option throughout the range yeah so you get this incredibly lightweight crazy like <laughs> resonant bright guitar <laughs> of guitar builders or dozens of guitar builders will obviously offer their take on a, on a Telecaster. So you're obviously trying to sort of go, so what's, what is it about the Shabbat thing that sort of stands out? And I, and I liked, I liked some of the things around, you know, the truss rod um, adjustment. I thought some of the scratch plate um, shapes were, were kind of interesting. I liked the little angled blade, you, you know, so they were just like, because you're, you're actually, you have to be very careful with how far away you move exactly. from from that sort of vintage vibe before you start to look at the guitar and go, mm, well, yeah. I don't, I don't like it That's anymore. Not happening. <laughs> but even your choice of some of the pickups with the blade style pickups on on here and the, uh, I, I, again, this sort of what's it like a hex kind of shaped blade pickup. I thought, oh, they look cool. They're sort of interesting. Mm -hmm. Obviously, you you know, you got a choice on these guitars of of either some aging and relicking or, or not, as that's up to you. Um, but obviously, as people will know who watch this, we're always kind of fans of that sort of relic sort of vibe here. Um, but why don't we, you, 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 you chose to name your range after big cats. So you've yeah. got lions and pumas and all that kind of stuff, leopards and stuff. But I guess the lion is probably what, you know, you're best known yeah for your shape so that's this sort of single cut t style sort of shape but i don't know tell me tell me about we got three different guitars here just mm -hmm. to tell me tell me about you know when when you how how this has evolved and again what is it that you know what again, yeah so again what, what's your when when you make a guitar what what what's perfection for you you know what's like yeah so yeah it it, it started with with uh with the lion gb uh, in pine, and 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 then we uh, we moved to uh, the standard. Mm -hmm. So that's what an ash body on there, or something. Yeah, this one yeah. is a, a single piece ash body, and um, and then yeah, for me because I'm a terrible guitar player. <laughs> so <laughs> many great builders yeah. don't really play, which is <laughs> yeah. kind of freaky. You know, Leo Fender being probably the most famous one of all, but you know. Yeah. Uh -huh. 
that telly is a very intimidating uh, guitar because if you're not good, it's gonna tell you <laughs> you, you suck. So, so then I started making the the stuff that is more forgiving, like uh, you know the humbucker ones. They're just you know you can just go to town on them. So which which came first? Did this come first or so did this Justin? Came first. Sorry, I, I meant specifically. Uh, as far as this so did, Justin? did Justin come up with this design, or did you make no, this design and then he was, liked it? Yeah, that was a uh, that was around, and and when when he came by, we uh, we decided to make him a couple so he can make a decision if he likes the uh, the Fender uh, um, scale length or more of like the Gibson, which is 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 where he uh, live most mostly, and. Yeah, he ended up going with uh, the wraparound 24 and... Uh, right. Yeah, because that, I mean... Uh, 75. He had that guitar with yeah. him. Uh, and, and in fairness, you see that guitar on stage with him at most Pink yeah. gigs. Because he's a, you know, he'll intersperse between playing that and, and a few Les Pauls that he's got. But I thought... A few. I loved the... I love the black over gold, because I kind of mm -hmm. think, you know, that's such a classic... And it doesn't feel too contrived that because you'd have had many guitar players with a with a gold Les Paul yeah. that would have resprayed it black at some point or other. I loved the ebony board um, with the block inlays, the two humbuckers, and then it kind of lends itself nicely to that seventies Tele Deluxe kind of vibe as yeah. well. Uh, this, I believe, does Justin's have the three aside or the six aside? I can't remember because you can get it in either, can't you? Uh, you can get it in either, and I. Ooh. That's a yeah, good I can't question. remember. I can't now. remember either. But I think it was. Uh, I think it was a three on a side. Yeah, I think. I yeah, think yeah. it was. But I, anyway, so I think I don't know why we elected to do the six a side on on the one that that we ordered. But I thought that was super cool. And then we thought we'd have a bit of a blast with the Puma as well. You know, obviously you can see the inspiration for that um, coming from like a jazz master sort of vibe. But um, yeah, so the the, the Puma was uh, was kind of like. Uh, a combination of ideas with me and Chris Trainer, guitar player for Bush, Helmet, right. Orange Nine Mimer. Right. He he came by with uh, and he's like, let's do some kind of like a Tysco vibe. Okay. Uh, guitar. And, and needs more switches. Needs <laughs> a lot more switches, a lot of <laughs> organ switches. Yeah. And I'm like, you sure? They're kind of ugly. <laughs> he's like, no, trust me, it's gonna be cool. And we started working on the shape together. And it kind of evolved to to being this. Initially, it was like a neck with no truss rod. Wow. And yeah, I still Brave. have the, uh, the prototype, but it's kind of like, it's not together at all. <laughs> it's, it's just collecting dust. But um, yeah, and I actually, I, I'm, I love this model, and we're trying to kind of, uh, it, it's still trying to find a, uh, its place in, in the market. We just got one for uh, Henning Polly as well. And um, I, I, I really dig the Puma, but it, uh, I think it's a great, yeah. it's a great looking guitar. I'm, I'm into this whole overspray uh, vibe at the moment. Again, I know every time we go down the relic route oh, yes. in a video, the comment section goes on fire and blah, blah, oh, blah, yeah. but you know, whatever. If you don't like it, don't buy it. But if you don't do, then, it. you know, <laughs> that's cool as well. Um, tell me a little bit about then, so, so how many guys you got working at the, at the shop now? So we're a total of five. Oh, so it's still really small, right? Very small, yes. Yeah. Which I kind of like because to, to a certain extent, 
when when custom shops go above a certain size, it's hard to know where does custom shop finish and factory start. You know, exactly. Like, at least when there's so are all five of you. Do you have your specialist um, skill in in the build process, or are you yeah. all building the whole thing start to finish? No. So we have uh, we have me. I at this point I'm pretty much focused on doing the wiring and. Uh, the final assembly and mm -hmm. QC, and Brian, uh, our production manager, is also is the guy who does all the uh, the coloring mm -hmm. and the aging as well, and uh, and the also quality control on the wood wood shop and mm -hmm. everything. Is the, the production manager, and then we have um, Leaf, and he's in charge of the sanding, and he does the fret work as well. Mm -hmm. Every guy, it kind of you know. A lot of people wear a lot of hats, and as they came in, they kind of found their their place where they shine. Kind of. Um, if you if you're in uh, California and you you know you, you're trying to um, have good stocks of timber for the sort of wood shop, where is it easy to find? You know, you got lumber merchants that you can go to, and you just are you hand picking timber or one of the other team doing? Yeah, it? I, uh, on certain uh, on certain. Woods, I would go hand pick, mm -hmm. um, and, and there are a few uh, places where we can get it. it. There would be times where you know they have a good amount, so you have to, to you have to stock up. Right. And uh, and like the roasted stuff usually comes from Canada. Mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, it's it's it it, it was uh, difficult for a while, but. Uh, yeah, I, what, I stocked up, so we're good. Are you, I mean, generally when you're looking to, to, to buy timber, I guess one of the beauties of being small is that you can literally just choose what yeah. you want. I guess when you get to the size of a, of a Gibson or a Fender, you, you know, you're, you're probably going, yep, yeah, give me 53 tons of this. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and it, it just arrives. But what are you, is it predominantly weight that you're looking for or grain or what are you looking for in, in the wood that you want to use? Yeah. Weight is very important uh, as far as bodies, and yeah, of course, grain. You know, and how clean it is. Mm -hmm. You don't want to get any knots and stuff like that. And as far as like necks, we are uh, we only use quarter saw necks mm -hmm. on everything. There's no exceptions there. So we look for the the straightest lines yeah. possible. We believe it's just it it creates a, a very stable instrument. Yeah. And because we are using a single trussard action, uh, construction, it's just, it makes it so, the guitars are very stable and it's been proven because there is a lot of people playing them all over the world. Mm. And not once did I hear like, uh, uh, the trussard was thrown off or right. stuff like that. So that makes me very happy. Do, do you go for a certain type of carve or radius or is it different depending on you know which model you go so from? i started uh with a nine and a half to 12 compound and that kind of became our standard as mm -hmm. far as the radius and a medium c kind of uh profile mm -hmm. now we're offering uh other types of profiles but we usually try to keep it uh on the uh manly side <laughs> I, you know? it's a, i must admit i was trying to decide maybe i had the uh, the standard model but this isn't too different it's got this <clears throat> it's i was interesting in the finishing because when you see fender do their relic it's normally a much more distinct you can see where the lacquer stops and where the worn bit starts yeah. and then normally the lacquer starts again and you don't really have that effect on these so there's obviously a piece of the i'll try and do this so the camera can see you can obviously see the where the coloration has gone sort of slightly darker yeah um where i suppose that most of the wear would be being sort of replicated but you don't have that it's yeah. very it's seamless so i'm just interested in so there obviously is some are you are you are you re lacquering over the sort of the discolored bit, or is it just is it a different type of lacquer that goes on this? So, yeah, for this area we la re lacquer, but very thin, right? Just so it, it won't it won't you know kind of absorb any moisture down the road, but still feel kind of you know woody in a way. Yeah, uh, yeah, and we used to have that abrupt 
transition yeah. and it looked terrible. <laughs> so we, so we it now- It does, I, I, I kind of, as a to, for feel, I don't mind the abrupt transition. You know, yeah. I like like, but I I it always looks, yeah, a, a bit unnatural. Whereas yeah. the way you've done this, it looks more like natural wear, even though you've kind of relacquered over yeah. it. Like you say, really thin. I assume it's all nitro. Yes. Yeah. So it's it, it's, I do you know what? I, it's so hard to explain the feel I'm, I'm not finding the words so you're just gonna have to drive to anderton's basically uh, or drive to your nearest shabbat dealer wherever that might be and because they've all got the same even when it goes over to like a mahogany neck or whatever like that it's all got that very nice like worn in but but not straight through to the wood kind of sanded finish yeah. that you sometimes get really nice i mean it's so ringy they all they all do this crazy ring we get. I imagine this video is being interspersed, hopefully, with Pete doing some playing, so that you can get an idea. But so when we talk about the pickups, um, you only work with one pickup manufacturer, correct? Which yes. is Lola. Yes. Nothing wrong. You know. Why? Well, let's talk about what 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 was the choice of deciding not to wind your own pickups and working with Lola? What was the thinking behind that? So. Uh... <laughs> When I started, I, uh, I actually thought about it. I, <laughs> I, I built my own winder, mm -hmm. and I started, you know, tackling the uh, the winding process. And uh, very quickly, <laughs> I, I realized <laughs> that uh, no, it, it's 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 uh, it's it's such it's it's you have to just dedicate yourself to that. It's so involved, and there's so much magic in making yeah. pickups that. It's you cannot do both. I mean, you can, but that will take away so much from from other things, and that will take away from actually producing uh, enough. I need uh, to. So. I need to get into the whole Lola thing. We've we've been a Lola dealer for maybe two or three years, and I know friends of mine and people watching this will know him well. Mick Taylor and Dan Steinhardt, all massive fans of of the yeah. Lola thing. I've I've always gone to Seymour Duncan if I've ever wanted to put aftermarket pickups in my own guitars. Mm -hmm. Actually, it's not entirely true. I've got some cream tea pickups in my Les Paul that were cool. But I do agree with you that, you know, when you speak to the guys at Seymour Duncan, there really is a science behind making a great pickup. I, yeah. I don't think it's as simple as just buying a winding machine and sitting there and just, you no. know. So what what have you and and does your relationship with Lola go way back to the like yeah. the first guitars? So what is it that you think about you know what is it that you love about the pickup their pickups? I mean, they're just so organic sounding. You know, they're very they're just they're not overpowering and and they're very yeah they just sound big and even and they complement whatever we make very well it's like <laughs> i suppose that's the most important thing isn't yeah it? and you know and, and on top of everything like i mean jason is is an awesome dude <laughs> and, is he based yeah. in la as well you know, get... they're in tacoma washington okay um, so that's a bit of a trip if you ever want to go and see them is it yeah and i need to do that eventually Tell me about the, i mean there's a couple of guitars that we've got here that are using a a, a blade sort mm -hmm. of magnet if you like rather than the the pole pieces mm -hmm. um you don't see blade style pickups terribly often but the you know mechanically i can understand why um you know what why people are drawn to them yeah. uh, so that the the concept here being less so on a bridge pickup but certainly on a neck pickup is as you were to bend the strings you can see that the the string itself moves um away from the pole piece Correct. and then back to the pole piece as you come back down so obviously the idea with a with a blade it's a continuous you mm -hmm. know uh, pickup but why do you think that you know what what was it about these and, and this one in fact especially this one what what is this pickup that's in here so that's the charlie christian mm -hmm. and uh, i think uh, there's a few other people making that pickup uh out there but i think lala are pretty much uh nailed it and it's 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 a jazz pickup you know mm -hmm. and uh and, and 
the only reason really is uh, when we made the first one for Gonzalo, initially it was just a, a bridge pickup only. Right. And then he's like, Avi, I think we need to, I, I, I cannot just do a bridge pickup. I need a neck pickup. And he sends me the set, the set of, uh, uh, so yeah, the set that Lawler has and we installed it and I'm like, that's, that's, that's pretty cool. And it uh, it gives you that beefiness. This this thing can sound like a, a jazz box in a way, um, and um, I really like it. It doesn't work for for everything, but uh, for this specific model, it works really well. I'm so drawn to this one and this one just because I think it's just, there, there's a you're always looking for. You know, Telecast is such a magnificent instrument. It's so, like, like you say, it's so um, reliable, and but also as well, I think it 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 makes the player play into the guitar more so mm -hmm. than than other guitars. Um, but you're always kind of going. There's always a part of me that goes, if you just buy a total total copy of a Fender, it's like, why don't you just buy the Fender? You know, exactly. so I'm always looking for like, oh, what, what's another, you know, what's another guy like, you know, small builder, what, what tweaks? Are, and I only want like 5%, 10% exactly. tweaks. I don't want like a totally different guitar. And I guess it's why things like this just, just an excuse to own another Telecaster style <laughs> exactly. guitar. Um, it's super, super cool. Tell me about some of the rest of the range then. I, I know we've only got four guitars here. Yeah. So... <clears throat> Presumably all the Lions and all the Pumas have got the same basic body shape, but then you've got different, you know, the, 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 yeah. the, 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 the big cat name just denotes the body shape, right? And then you've got tons of spec differences. So yeah. what, what else is in the catalogue? Maybe we'll ping some the things up on screen. <laughs> See? Erase. <laughs> okay, so uh, yeah, we have the Lynx, which is the S style. Okay. And we have the Leopard, which is the uh, J style. Right, um, and then we have so the so so the leopard and the puma are a different body style, are they? Yes. So this is there's two I, different I know, offsets. I know I mentioned this was sort of um, jazz master sort of inspired, but are you saying actually it's more Tysco than than jazz master? Exactly, and right. it's also it's also um, um, a, a twenty four and, and three quarters scale, so it's 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 its own thing, right? Um, and it's more simplified, <clears throat> whereas the uh, the jazz master style is oh, you got, got all the, the, switching uh, the rhythm, and all, the rhythm right. circuit, and all that. Okay, so that was the leopard. The leopard, yes. leopard, right? And what else? So, Lynx and the leopard. Was there anything else? Oh, <laughs> I'll just name yeah, some we big have, cats. Yeah, so we have we no have different, tigers. different flavors of lions. <laughs> right. We have so that will stay in the uh, the T department, and then we have uh, the lines of basses that we have, which is ah, panther. Course, yes. uh, a tiger and um, and it, you have if to go you, to the website. If you, if you were going to get called up to do a jam, you're you're more comfortable with a bass in your hand, aren't you, yeah. than, a, than a guitar in your hand? So yeah, and we, a lot of beer, <laughs> bass and beer. Fine, yeah. why not? Well, look, we, we'll have to. You know, we'll, we'll be at the Nam show in January this next year. So we'll 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 find you out and we'll 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 test out your bass playing skills. Maybe have a little jam on you know yeah. on your stand with you. Um, well, look, it's. I think, you know, really nothing left to do other than play some and for you guys to try and make it down to the store to, to give some a, a whirl because I, I'm, I really, really like these. Uh, and again, people will look at the price and, you know, it's obviously, you know, indicative of a guitar that is coming out of a custom shop and in, in really small numbers. But I still kind of think if you were to compare this to say going down the Fender master belt route as opposed mm -hmm. to normal custom shop and this very much feels like it's at that kind of level you, you could argue that you know these aren't bad value at all um, although you know we're not talking about guitars that are 500 pounds or anything like that you know we're yeah. talking thousands but oh, great guitar if you're a guitar aficionado, you should come and check one out. Well, thank you very much for coming in, sir. Thank you, Captain. Enjoy Thanks your for me. Uh, couple of days in London, meeting the Queen and all the other... Oh, she's dead, actually, so don't meet her. <laughs> <laughs> she is? I can't... Uh, it's, um, <laughs> it's a 50-year habit, <laughs> die hard here. Let's try that again. <laughs> but uh, thank you guys for watching. I hope you enjoyed some of the playing in this too. Links will be below to find out more about Shabbat Guitars. Uh, yes, we'll see you in another video soon.